Hey everyone, Bowser or X45X here. I've maybe spent a little too much time on Twitter since the Kazuya presentation, and a lot of you seem really worried about the character that Kazuya might be broken or has too much in his kit, and Gimmer, who I adore and I love his content and everything him and the VGBC uh, team does for Smash, I don't want this to sound like an attack on him. Gimmer made this wonderful list of a lot of the stuff that Kazuya has, and it's not even the whole thing. And it's daunting. Like, that is a lot to give a character. But when I looked at it, I wasn't too worried. And I know that might get me flamed a little bit, but give me a chance. I don't think any of this is super concerning. And I want to know what would make some of these things broken to kind of help people understand, I think, my mindset a little bit. And also what makes and breaks characters in video games. So let's just jump right into it. So when I look through the list, there's a few things here that don't really shock me as crazy, like having multiple moves that do a lot of shield damage or having a decent jump or second jump. Like, that's fine. Like, that's not something I'm going to be like ultra worried about. But the first thing on Gimmer's list that I want to address is a move that causes trip, two moves that cause the crumple state and a bunch of combo starters. Well, yeah, OK, that sounds a little bit scary on paper, but First of all, Kazi is from Tekken, and I wouldn't expect anything less from a character from the franchise where... ...happens. But also, a lot of the combo starters and whatnot... I mean, there's a lot of combo starters in Smash, so that doesn't really concern me. I think Kazuya having combos or access to a lot of combos or potential mix-ups is sort of standard, and there's a lot of crazy mix-ups in Smash already, so I don't think that's the biggest deal. Where this could get out of hand quickly is if we're going to use combo states. I don't know how many of you played Smash 4 on the 3DS, but ZSS had an infinite on Robin, and it very much abused states of paralysis, and I want to say footstool as well. Oh man, I'm going to have to go back and find a clip of that combo. Smash Ultimate seems to have a lot of systems in place to make sure that players can't create infinites on their own. Usually infinites require a teammate or someone else's assistance to make happen. So is if we find something that breaks the combo mechanics of things like crumple and trip, like for instance, if we can crumple and then trip and then crumple and then trip, that would obviously turn really broken really fast. That could be a potential place where our Kazuya could be really, really unfair. But note that for some characters, it's not like they're combo tools that are broken. It's one combo in particular. And a lot of traditional fighters, if you get some big counter hit, the game expects you to murder someone. And Tekken is no slouch in that category either. However, sometimes you have a character that has a very low counterplay, easy to get combo. You can easily do a bazillion damage to someone. And then maybe they have an easy kill confirm and smash or you know, they're one mix up away from killing you in a fighting game. And that can break a character, right? If a character can win two interactions and take a stock or take the round, that can be a little unfair. So I think that's something that you could certainly be worried about. But that's one where we're going to have to lab and see how much counterplay are there to these normals, right? Are the SDI modifiers interesting because there isn't a lot of hit lag? You know, is the D are there strong DI modifiers? Like, we don't know how it works yet. So... I would keep your eyes open for insane combos with zero counterplay, but as long as there's counterplay to the combo game, Kazuya can have as many combo starters as he wants, honestly. But what about the invulnerable and the armored moves? Well, first of all, armored moves, I'm not super worried about. Um, they're not broken on Sephiroth, they're not broken on Little Mac. Armor, it seems to be in a nice place in Smash Brothers where it works exactly where it needs to, and it has a decent amount of counterplay to it, or the risk reward to it is kind of obvious. I know some people might disagree with that, but you can throw armor, and we already know that the up smash, for instance, has less armor than the forward smash. The forward smash has a sour spot, and it's got a slow startup. So that's not deeply concerning. But the invulnerable moves, I understand why people might be worried about these, but to explain something real quick, in Tekken, you have three kinds of normals. You have highs, mids, and lows. I know there's others, but I'm just going to talk about those three. I only bring this up because in Tekken, Choosing whether you want to stand or crouch is a really important part of neutral. But furthermore, there are moves that call out other attacks, called crushes. 
if a move is a low crush, and I think Lucky Chloe here, our launcher is a low crush, that means that if someone uses a low attack and Lucky Chloe decides to uh, use her launcher, she will pass through the low attack and hit the opponent and start a combo. That's great, but there that doesn't exist in Smash. We don't have high mids and lows, we have attacks. So what gives? I think the invulnerable frames on a lot of Kazuya's moves are to allow him to trade effectively and call out specific styles of attacks, right? And we saw some counterplay with some of the slides in the game. I think that's what it's for. But we know from Sakurai's presentation that he also mentioned that Kazuya is a bit on the slow side, even though he is faster than his original game. If he's slow or laggy or easily whiff punished, then a lot of the invulnerable moves are probably nothing more than good callouts. The same kind of thing you'd have to be dealing with with other characters on the regular, right? Mario's up smash has intangibility on it. Some characters have moves that are so safe they're almost unpunishable at certain ranges. You've dealt with moves that call you up before. This is just a character who doesn't have a sword or a gun or a whip or something who has the ability to plow through a move and call someone out. Also, we don't know if those moves are intangible like you don't exist or intangible like Banjo's side B or Incineroar's neutral B, which have invulnerable frames but can also be thrown. So it's hard to tell right now, but if they're throwable, that's just one more way you can counterplay those kinds of moves. They would be broken, immediately broken, if for whatever reason, uh, like Kazuya have like no end lag or like no startup on it. As long as there's some method of counterplay to those invulnerable moves, they're going to be fine. One final note about counterplay I just want to double up on is that like most of the cast, it, no, actually the entire cast has counterplay. You have the ability to bait as anyone in this game. Baiting is normal in fighting games. And thus, if Pazia has some invulnerable or some armored moves, but they have inherent risks to them and places where they're used a lot, then you can easily counterplay those situations as you see them come up. Like, box players all the time will use short hops to try to bait the opponent, and then will full hop or double jump or stall in the air with a down B to call someone out trying to hit them out of the air, only to hit them in the air a moment later. That sort of thing would work really effectively against the armor or against the invulnerability frames. So as long as there is a moment to hit Kazuya when he whiffs, None of these moves are really super scary in my book. So I just something I wanted you guys to think about. The whole cast should be able to bait the whole cast to some degree. So not too worried about that one. There are two mechanics, though, when I look at this list that really jump out to me as they could definitely be broken. And that is the crouch dash and the armor, the auto armor or the tough guy armor. Let's start with the crouch dash. It's upper body and vulnerable which means its lower body is exposed, but that allows Kazuya to, as you can see here, dash through a projectile. That's horrifying. And if he counts as crouching, that means he can use his wall rising moves, as well as his tough guy armor while crouching, more on that in a moment, and all of his other attacks out of crouch dash. Well, yeah, that is spooky. That is scary. That's, that's, <laughs> that's something to be concerned about. But we need to know, again, what are the limits to this vulnerability? Can you only go into crouch dash or these attacks? Is there a lot of lag if you don't do that? Is it throwable? You know, is this the kind of invulnerability where if we hit the invulnerable part, our hitbox won't hurt Kazuya? Or is this the kind of thing where as long as the hitbox goes low enough, it will hit Kazuya? Because if that's the case, that means that someone like Captain Falcon could jump over the move and stomp on it to start a combo. And that would be really, really neat. But we just don't know yet. And also, if there was like no lag after a crouch dash, like you could crouch dash and then up smash really quickly, that would be very concerning. And if like there was no end lag after these moves, like if you get hit with an electric wind god fist and it's like plus on block, and knowing like it is in Tekken, I would be horrified that like Kazi is just going to crouch dash electric wind god fist me over and over and over again. It absolutely happened to me in Tekken. That's a move that like I feel like they have to really be careful about balancing. And if the character was super busted from one move, I feel like Crouch Dash is where I would point my blame um, if I had to make a guess. But if balanced correctly, it's just a nice utility to help Kazuya get in because Kazuya is going to struggle to get in. And I want to talk about that in a moment. But before I do, Tough Guy is an armor that Bowser has that lets him absorb weak hitting moves. It works till a certain percent on certain moves. 
And, you know, sometimes it allows him to just plow through someone and hit them for free. Sometimes, um, Tough Guy is, when crouching, however, Tough Guy is stronger. In fact, the entire cast has less knockback when crouching, which inherently makes Tough Guy stronger. So what about Kazuya? Well, I noticed something in the trailer. When Kazuya absorbs ZSS's punches, he's crouching. In the next scene, like a moment later, Byleth lands jab one, jab two in a rapid jab. The rapid jab gets punished because Kazuya can tough guy it, but notice the first two hits. They cause real hit stun. What about it? Well, that would mean that Kazuya can only go through certain moves when crouching. Like it might have to be an obscenely weak attack for him to be able to absorb it while standing. And that actually makes sense. Remember earlier how I said that Tekken characters can crouch to get under jabs? Well, that would definitely make sense that he can crouch through jabs and then, oh, he could punish them with the wall rising attack, just like you might be able to in Tekken. That's really useful. So it might be more of a call out than anything, but like all call outs, it comes with its risk and reward. And if you can still grab him or hit him hard enough that the tough guy armor doesn't trigger, well then it's just a mechanic that Kazuya can sometimes use to deal with people that could also get him hurt. So it's just counterplay. It's not too scary. Again, the values here matter more than anything. If Kazuya can just tough guy through a lot of opening attacks in the game and just sort of be unfair for a moment, that might be a little hard to deal with. So what does this all mean? Well, I want to talk a little bit about Kazuya's approach game. Outside of crouch dash and a reflect, Kazuya has to get in the old fashioned way of moving your ass towards the opponent. He doesn't have incredible ground speed and it doesn't look like his air speed's anything insane and I don't know about the acceleration so I don't know if he can do jigglypuff things in the air necessarily. So what does this mean? Well this makes me think awfully a lot about Incineroar. Incineroar has a playstyle where he is the slowest thing in the game. But if Incineroar puts you in a corner, his verticality will mess you up. Not only does he have a counter and a command grab and a vulnerable move and an armored move to say something about your attacks. He has one of the best double jumps in the game and a ton of very good air to air and air to ground pokes. Combine those all together and it's really hard to get around Incineroar effectively, especially when he has great punishes for landing options and for people trying to stall in the air, he can call them out with his fantastic aerials. So it doesn't matter if you're that slow on the ground, as long as the opponent can't get out of the corner or can't leave the location you've trapped them in, you're doing great as Incineroar. Well, that's exactly what I think Kazuya is going to be good at. Similar to Ryu and Ken, when the character gets in, he has options. Tons of options. We already went over, he has a ton of combo starters. He has shield crushes. Oh, and by the way, an armored command grab. Pretty spooky to me. But none of those are going to work if he's not in. So Kazuya's objective is likely to be to lock down the opponent in the corner or by calling them out of a bad approach and the opponent has now put themselves in a bad position. And then Kazuya can do whatever the heck he wants just like Incineroar. So if he's slow and he struggles to get in, that means that players are going to have an easy time walling him out and Kazuya is going to have to make very good decisions trying to get in. And furthermore, before anyone brings up the laser, the laser is laggy. Now this could change before launch, but it appears to be a very laggy move and it's easily blocked. It's easily dodged. So that move is probably going to be way more of a risk to opponents at the ledge where you could snipe them out of the air, similar to Rob. I don't think in neutral it's going to be insane. It will definitely have its use cases. You know, you hit someone out of the air once and you might put them in the corner. With what we just talked about, that's amazing. It's not like it's good enough that it will make up for his lack of movement, but it will probably help sometimes because of his lack of movement. Something I wanted you guys to consider. Hey everyone, Bowser from the future on my phone. I just want to know when I say lack of movement here, I mean lack of movement outside of crouch dash if there is counterplay to crouch dash i would be worried that you couldn't use it all the time and if that's true then kazuya would be lacking in movement but again we have to wait and see so where is kazuya broken well if they balance this character completely right let's say all of those moves and everything are balanced it would be the airspeed and the ground speed it would be in the damage values right as long as the damage values aren't too high the knockback isn't too insane as long as Kazuya's game plan involves him needing to get close to the opponent and the tools to get in have risk and reward to them, Kazuya will be fine. Now, food for thought, 
if you gave Ike or Incineroar or Kazuya Mario or Roy's speed on the, on the ground and in the air, they would be broken. They'd probably be the best characters in the game overnight. Like, if you made Incineroar a little bit faster in the air or a little bit faster on the ground, it, it would be a horror show for everyone involved, except for the Incineroar players. They'd be pumped. I would be pumped, specifically me. But with a little too much airspeed or ground speed, he could be a menace. So I think that's really where the character's broken, outside of abusing combo states and maybe a busted combo or a move with zero counterplay to it. As long as he has all of the other features other Smash characters do, like SDI and DI modifiers and, you know, counterplay to his kit, I think Kazuya is going to be okay. Kazuya could be busted in any category very quickly, but given how the Smash team has been considering balance, we're getting a lot of buffs to characters that they feel like needs it, and we're not getting a massive metric ton of nerfs unless something is truly too much. I don't think we have anything to worry about, but as a final note before we head off, Y'all need to remember one thing. Sometimes you think a character is great or they're garbage because you don't know the match. You don't know your combo routes yet. You don't know how to get in. Kazuya might feel like awful, might feel like trash. If you find some sick combo routes and your opponents have no ideas how to deal with your pressure or your buttons, you might feel like a god. Make sure to give it a couple weeks of playing the matchup and playing as Kazuya if you're able to and let the character develop for a month. We'll know if the character's broken before a month is over if there's something obscenely powerful with zero counterplay. Try not to knee-jerk react to everything you see, do your research, do your homework, and uh, let's hope he's balanced, because realistically, if this character is balanced, it seems like a really cool character. I made a tweet, I want to know how Kazuya's going to play in five years from now. Like, how will Kazuya develop after years of being in this game? What do you guys think? Do you agree or do you completely disagree? I'd actually love to know if you do disagree why you do, but, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Until we get the character in our hands later today, I don't think we have anything to be super worried about. But let me know your thoughts, and thank you so much for watching. I'll be streaming Kazuya and my initial impressions tonight, and if you miss them, I'll highlight them on my Twitch. where You can find me streaming currently Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, the schedule sometimes changes depending on tournaments because I go and commentate. I think you guys will find me. Thank you so, so much for listening, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!